Before I start, I'd like to know who's in charge today. Is it me? Or is it you? Or is it someone behind me? Well, let's hold on to that thought. I would like for you all to raise your hand if you agree with me. How many of us here really like to read? And how many of us here like to maybe overlook and manage people? Good. Now tell me, how many of us here really like the stress that comes along with it? I just witnessed a gradual decline in the show of hands. But that's the reality today. Now, today my topic is on how we need to exactly be as a proper leader. Because leadership is something that we normally see as people managing people, right? But we misconceptualize this. We think that leaders are people who manage, but rather leaders are supposed to be an inspiration to many people. So my, my point here is that instead of looking at leadership as a role that is being played by a few of us, we need to start looking at it as a role that many people need to cascade down to younger generations. And that might be the focal point in order to create a massive change in humanity. As we see the world today, it is something where we live, we feel like we're living inside a pressure cooker. And especially for the younger youth, young generation, we are mostly pressurized by things that are revolving around us in the world. Maybe the things that our parents might be telling us, maybe our elder siblings, right? But all these things that and things and matters that are being put to our heads sometimes feels like a pressure cooker. But that's not your fault. You are not at blame here, right? So who can do this? Who can exactly change the way we see how we can portray ourselves to the world? It's going to be you guys. So Simon Sinek, a great leader, has quoted that we all need to start with why. If you notice here, the center point. Now why basically puts purpose to somebody's life. And purpose ultimately would bring meaning to that person's life. So if you just take a step back and start to realize where exactly we are going, why exactly are we going to take that next step in our life? So when you figure out the reason why you're going to choose a particular destination, we'll ultimately know the how and the what, the way in which we're going to achieve our result. So think back, guys. That's the only way that we are going to face towards the pace that's being rapidly thrown at us. So tell me one reason why we basically do not engage in this rapid world. It is because the younger generation as we speak are far too afraid in order to face what is going to come at us and whatever that can be thrown in front of us if we were to drive through. We are afraid, that is reality. And like I said before, in order to get yourself out of this afraid zone, you have to make a stance. So we already know that in an organization, we mostly work under people, right? But I would like to say that instead of working for a, pe for a person, you need to be the, be the one who inspires others and make a unit for yourself where you love what you're doing. So managers and leaders come and go, but your passion will stay where it is. So in order to do what you like, you need to ask that question, why? When you go back and track down your interest, you will know the why for what you're going to do. And that will basically tell you where you're going to be in the world. So look at this diagram. This world, we do not want to have managers or bosses who basically push you. We need leaders who are those inspired people who are going to pull you along with the business goals. So if you are going to be with a person who pushes you, how many of us do you think can cope up to this um, rush 
rushing world against us. Do you really think that we can tolerate it? Just take a moment and think, how would you feel if someone, or even at home, kept pushing you? Every day, pushing you for that, pushing you for this, get that job done, get this task over, you have a particular timeline to finish this. We might feel annoyed. We might feel irritated. We might feel pressured, painful, annoyed. So many emotions come and go. That is the exact feeling that the youth goes through these days, that gushing feeling that we all go through, and that includes myself as well. We all feel that. Once again, why? I believe that we have failed to identify the correct leadership style that fits our role. And secondly, we have somewhere along the way, we, we forgot the entire ideology of being an adaptive leader. And thirdly, along the way, we've also forgotten the essence of being humble. Let me just share you a small story. This was at one of my previous work uh, places. When I first uh, got the job, I was actually a student studying, and uh, this job offer basically came towards me. And I don't want to name the company, but then again, it was an amazing job, right? I really loved the place, I loved the work, I loved the pay. It was all good. The manager was good to me, and I felt comfortable in that place. But as I kept gradually growing in that career, I started to feel pressurized, and the stress was basically a boiling pot of water for me. So how did I come out of it? And what is the reason for me to feel that way? It's because my manager, I believe, has not figured out his proper leadership style. Some might think that I'm overthinking. But in reality, when you feel yourself in that particular position, you will understand that my manager was basically a strong-headed man who really did not see me from my own lenses. Because every person has a view. We view the world differently from another person. And that's when I realized that's not the place for me. And secondly, the adaptive leadership. It's basically how you're going to revolve the world against you. How are you going to face it? That adaptive nature in you will teach you how you're going to basically face whatever that's going to come at you in a new form. And finally, it is about being humble. Let me take you through these three points, which, which I would say that these three are the attributes that any one of us can cultivate. And I believe that these three can be that focal point to create that massive change in humanity towards all those younger people who are looking up, looking up to you. So firstly, it's about that leadership style I mentioned. Now these two are basically two fundamental strategies that anyone needs to navigate in terms of their leadership style. A, dominance, and B, prestige. Now the most often leadership styles that we might have heard across our life would be, uh, my boss is an autocratic, or my boss is a democratic, or maybe some people are laser fair. Now, these are the common terms that we usually come across with. These type of bosses are the ones who basically pushes you, orders you, basically shouts at you. And maybe there are bosses who basically lets you decide on certain decision-making processes, but then ultimately, the boss will make the decision and then all your work goes to no use. What is the point of all my effort then? And thirdly, laser sphere, this is where leaders basically give all the freedom to you, which you might not even know what's right and wrong. No proper guidance. So I would say that these two are the best qualities or the two most important leadership styles that a leader needs to navigate through in their workplace. Now, what are these? Now, dominance simply means that one person needs to leverage his authority and sort of put it against his employees in the most assertive manner. And this basically means that he or she must be a bold, confidence and a confident, and a strong individual. He has to portray himself in that particular manner. Because ultimately, when you are the leader, 
you cannot have anyone overpower you. That is the mentality we have. But that's not just that. And secondly, it's about the prestige. Now, prestige means not the prestige that you might have heard of. <laughs> it basically means that you need to encourage others to follow you. And this is where you develop the skill of empathetically thinking for your subordinates. Now, even as friends, even as this younger crowd here, what we mostly do is, in school or someplace, there might be a group and we might have a leader for them, saying you are the big man, right? We might have that. And that particular boy or girl might be the one to guide everyone, whoever who is, uh, who is part of that crowd or the clique. But have you all thought about it, whether you actually felt for your other party, where you empathetically put yourself in that other person's shoe to really understand what he or she is going through. This is where most leaders fail. This is where my manager failed. He did not even pause for a second to ask me, Chivara, are you feeling good? Are you okay with the workload? Is it, is it comfortable? Nothing. There were zero questions. It was just work, 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 pressure, pressure, pressure and tasks kept on adding. But ultimately, that's the world we live in. There is not a single moment, not a single second, where people use it to understand what that other person is feeling. We fail to do so. So I believe if these two leadership styles can be cultivated for an individual, any person will understand the highs and lows of leadership. And even as the younger crowd here, if we start now, change is possible. Secondly, this is where a person needs to create an adaptive nature in them, right? So uh, we mostly refer to this as the four A's. The four A's are as follows. Number one, anticipation. Number two, articulation. And number three, adaptation. And lastly, it's accountability. Now what are these? Anticipation is where now we as young people must be curious to find out what is the future going to bring us? What is that new thing, new options, new trends? What are those new things that's going to happen around us? We need to be prepared. In other words, you need to start being proactive to expect or at least try to figure out what's going to come in the near future. And secondly, articulation. Articulation simply means you putting that particular perspective into something more tangible. You might have figured out, okay, in, in two years' time, this is going to come into the country. But what are you going to do in order to acquire that? It could be a new product, but how are you going to take it, right? What is the mechanism you're going to use? So you need to articulate it, meaning you need to build some collective understanding as to how you're going to exactly take action for that particular new task. And thirdly, it's adaptation. This is where you continuously learn. There is no pause, there is no end. You have to learn from the day you're born till the day you die. Because things revolving around us are new and rapid. There's not a single moment that a person stops spreading new knowledge. So we cannot pause at any level thinking that we've acquired the best knowledge, no. Every day is a new day for you to learn, and that can be only possible if you're adaptive in nature. You're open to new things. And lastly, accountability. Now, all the above three, you can simply keep doing it. But then again, in order to make sure that you did the right thing, and sometimes you could even fail, right? But you need to be accountable. You need to be accountable in order to take that responsibility ultimately. You should be open to the challenge, plus, open for criticisms as well. And take these criticisms as constructive criticisms where we can use them to learn from it, but not be undermined. Never feel undermined if someone blames you, but try to understand why and where exactly we made that mistake. If a leader can cultivate these four, once again, the leadership and how they're gonna look at others is gonna be simple. It's going to be easy when you have this sort of a lens. And thirdly, I would say 
as I said earlier, people have forgotten the essence of being humble, right? Tell me, guys, how important do you think being humble is? Is it that difficult to sustain this particular characteristic? But let me just tell you this. Being humble is far to imagine, and the gravity of it is stronger than the gravitational pull on Earth, right? Because it's very hard to sustain by a human being. Why? Once again. This is because people have lost the essence of being humble. How is the question. As a person gets famous, a person gets richer, right? We all go ahead towards that big title, big fame, a lot of money, big car, big house. These are the things we all like, right? But most often people make that mistake of realizing as at that moment when you acquire these things, we tend to forget what exactly pushed us to that stance. We forget about it. So the humbleness that we initially had dies along. It tends to slow down. So how are you going to regain that? That's a question that you'll have to keep thinking on and figure that answer out by yourself. But someone at home does this without an issue, without any hassle, someone at home is always humble to you. Who is that? It's our mother. It's a mother who is always humble to us. A mother is someone who basically doesn't eat most of the time until their child eats. Or if it's, if it's that last remaining piece of food, the mother would give it to the child, even if she has to starve. And also, most often, mothers are the ones who stay wide awake late night, maybe until their child returns home. My mother stays awake till 2 or 2 a.m. sometimes if I'm going home late. That's that unconditional love that the mother has. No one is pushing her in order to do that. And one more important point for your mother. If that child comes home soaked under the rain, back home, your house might be filled with father, brother, sister, but that mother is the one who runs to the door or at least walks in, in reality, carrying that piece of cloth so that you do not get sick. This is where we fail to really understand what our mother is doing at home. Under a theory, it might be like being humble, but in reality, she is doing it without anyone teaching her to do it. So why can't we cascade such attributes and that nature towards the people that we meet on a daily basis? It's simply because we see differences in people. The world has taught us to look at differences, and they have also taught us to be better than this person, right? Stop thinking in that angle, I would say. Rather, be the best version of yourself. When you are being the best version of yourself, everything, these riches, this money, fame, automatically comes towards you. You don't have to go for it, fighting another person against it. It is totally unnecessary. So guys, when I now ask you, who is in charge today? Who is the leader today? I want you all to raise your hand, and not just me who is talking here. So initially, when I asked you this question, you might have felt that I'm the leader here. But in reality, that might be OK for an event like this, right? So just taking you all, rewinding my entire story for now, taking you all back by a few moments, where exactly do we fail in life? This question must be in your head. Where exactly could you fail or fail in life? Most often, it's the point or the initial point where you think. Your negative thoughts pushes you down before you even take your first step. So let's stop the negative thinking. And let's regain what was lost. So we know that in this world, in this country, leadership was kind of a messy road. Now who do you think has the power to change this? As young individuals, it's all of us. 
We need to regain what was lost, what was once lost. We need to regain it, and that power lies within us. And we need to quit complaining. Complaining takes us nowhere. But instead, you start with why you're complaining. Why exactly are you complaining? If you figure out the why, you eventually know the how and the what. If I'm to leave you today with a simple message, I would like to leave you with this quote. If you are working on something exciting that you really care about, you do not have to be pushed. The vision will pull you. Thank you.